Reshaping the Chip Landscape How a $255 billion order withdrawal ignited a global supply chain crisis. Deep Dive As $1.4 trillion evaporates from Western semiconductor value, Chinese manufacturing breaches the final line of defense. In the winter of early 2024, the temperature of the global semiconductor industry seemed to hit a freezing point overnight. But this time, the chill wasn't felt by the blockaded east, but by the western giants across the ocean. It might be hard to imagine the scene, just as Wall Street traders were still partying over the AI concept. Within a short span of 10 months, the market capitalization of the U.S. chip sector evaporated by $1.4 trillion out of thin air. ASML, the hegemon of lithography machines, saw its stock crash 14% in a single day, setting a historic record for decline. The fuse for all of this was not some black swan event, but a data point ignored by many. China formally hit the pause button, halting chip import orders worth a staggering 255 billion renminbi. What does this 255 billion mean? It is not just a number. It is equivalent to, or even exceeds, the total annual technology R&D budget of certain developed nations. When this massive amount of capital ceased flowing west, a butterfly effect regarding survival and destruction began to oscillate violently through Silicon Valley and the industrial heart of Europe. Today, we are going to peel back the layers of these press releases to look at the three key turning points that have been deliberately overlooked, and how, in this technological cold war, China has completed a desperate breakout with a precision akin to a scalpel. First, we must turn our gaze to the eye of the storm, Micron Technology. This memory chip giant, which once summoned wind and rain in the Chinese market, is now facing the agonizing pain of a self-amputation. The latest news disclosed by Reuters reveals that Micron plans to fully terminate the supply of server chips to Chinese data center clients. What does this mean? It means Micron is completely withdrawing from a market it has cultivated for 20 years. But was this truly Micron's voluntary choice? Not at all. This is actually a chronic death that has lasted a year. As early as 2023, China launched a security review of critical information infrastructure, and some of Micron's products were blacklisted due to serious potential cybersecurity risks. We must realize that in the digital age, storage chips are the safes for data. If the safe itself has a backdoor, national security is out of the question. Although Micron's top executives have repeatedly called out publicly, expressing efforts to repair relationships with Chinese clients and even speaking at length about their commitment to China in earnings calls, the reality of the data is cold. In fiscal year 2024, although Micron's revenue in China was still $3.4 billion, this accounted for 12% of its total revenue. Giving up this 12% for a listed company is not just a decline in profit, but a collapse of its stock valuation system. More brutal reality checks followed. Micron had to execute a Rutan branch layoff in its China data center division, with over 300 core employees facing restructuring. Prior to this, the general flash memory division had already cut hundreds of staff, and the R&D of mobile NAND products was forced to halt. This is not just losing a market, it is losing a strategic foothold in future technological competition. It's not just Micron, Intel's days are even harder. Its second quarter revenue in China plummeted by 58%, a figure that is simply disastrous. Immediately following this, its Dalian factory closed, and thousands of skilled technicians were let go. Even NVIDIA, seemingly invincible in the AI era, hit a wall. The H20 AI chip they launched specifically for the Chinese market, after crippling its performance, faced mass returns from Chinese clients because the computing power was slashed too severely, resulting in an extremely low price-to-performance ratio. These chips, once seen as hard currency, are now piling up by the ton in warehouses, turning into dead stock. This series of events sends an extremely strong signal to the world. The Chinese market is no longer a dumping ground for Western companies' obsolete technology and defective products. So, if we aren't buying theirs, what are we using? This brings us to the second key point, how China's domestic supply chain, once a spare tire, has taken the main stage and started speeding down the track. In recent years, 
The Western world has held a misconception. They believe that by locking down high-end lithography machines, they could lock down the future of Chinese technology. This arrogance made them overlook the ability of Chinese engineers to make molecular cuisine using a microwave. Let's look at a set of hardcore data. In the 28 nanometer process field, mid to low end but most widely used, SMIC's production line yield has already risen to an astounding 92%. You might think 28 nanometers isn't advanced enough, but please note, over 75% of global chip demand, from your smart home appliances and new energy vehicles to industrial control systems, uses this process. In this field, we have basically achieved self-sufficiency. In the higher-end storage sector, the breakthrough by YMTC, Yangtze Memory Technologies Corp., can simply be described as a miracle. They took the lead in mass-producing 232-layer 3D NAND flash memory. What is this concept? If we compare storage chips to constructing a building, previously we could only build bungalows, which took up a lot of land and had small capacity. Now, YMTC has built a 232-story skyscraper. With the same footprint, the storage density and read-slash-write speeds directly crush many established international rivals. This technology has directly broken the years-long monopoly of Samsung and Micron. Then there are our hard bones, lithography machines and etching machines. Shanghai Microelectronics, SME, 28 nanometer lithography machine has filled part of the high-end demand, while Amex 5 nanometer etching machine has achieved complete localization. An etching machine is like a nanometer level scalpel, carving complex circuits onto chips, and in this step, we have walked to the forefront of the world. Add to this the domestic Kirin 9010 chip, which chases the Apple A18 in performance, and this series of combinations has punched countless holes in what once seemed like an indestructible technological wall. The hands that were choking our necks are becoming increasingly weak. This technological breakthrough has directly brought about a massive change at the capital level. In 2023, investment in Chinese data centers grew ninefold year on year, reaching a total of 24.7 billion renminbi. This is a terrifying growth rate. China has become the world's second largest server memory market. When such a massive incremental market begins purchasing domestic chips on a large scale, for export dependent Western companies, this is effectively removing the fuel from their fire. This explains why we are seeing the third turning point. Western giants have begun to exhibit a kind of schizophrenic behavior. On one hand, the US government continues to ramp up blockades, but on the other, the survival instinct of companies forces them to bow down and sue for peace. Look at Intel. While laying off staff in the US, it lavished 13.2 billion renminbi in Shenzhen to establish an AI innovation center. Why? Because they need not only China's market but also the massive amount of data from China's AI application layer to train their algorithms. Qualcomm followed suit, launching exclusive chip products for China attempting to salvage lost market share. Even more intriguing is Europe's attitude. ST Microelectronics was exceptionally active last year in setting up joint ventures in China. This approach of saying no with their mouths but being honest with their bodies reflects the iron reality that the global semiconductor industry cannot decouple from China. We must introduce a historical mirror here, Japan's Toshiba. In 2018, Toshiba sold its chip business under immense pressure. The result? It completely missed the dividend of the subsequent explosion in the global memory chip market and has yet to recover its former glory. Today's Western giants, if they continue to persist in Cold War thinking and blockade China, may find that Toshiba's today is Intel and Micron's tomorrow. Of course, we cannot be blindly optimistic. We must clearly recognize that risks still exist. Although we are progressing rapidly in chiplet technology and the RISC-V open-source architecture, attempting to overtake by changing lanes to bypass lithography restrictions, there is still a long road to go to completely replace high-end processes below 3 nanometers. The progress of the localization of future 3 nanometer lithography machines will directly determine whether we can stand completely firm. But this is not a dead end. Bernstein Research predicts that by 2027, 
the proportion of domestic Chinese AI chips will soar from 17% in 2023 to 55%. This is an irreversible trend. This seemingly ordinary process of supply chain substitution is actually triggering a restructuring of the global technology map. Just as the localization of high-speed rail technology allowed China to connect every inch of its land, when chip technology is combined with China's massive new energy vehicles, industrial internet, and AI application scenarios, what is produced is not a quantitative change, but a qualitative one. This explains why the editorial board of Nature magazine rarely admitted that the Chinese research paradigm is reconstructing global innovation standards. Because we are not just catching up. We are creating new courses, from the halting of 255 billion in orders, to the retreat of Micron and Intel, to the full blossoming of domestic chips. This is not just a commercial competition, it is a battle for the right to define. The West is accustomed to defining technical standards and defining supply chain rules, but now, the East is using its strength to tell the world, rules can be rewritten. This is the dialectic of technological development and the final answer given by history.